Your attention, please. And now, on with the show. Live from Paradise Studios in New York, Strong Island Television presents Unger the Radar, starring Randy Unger. Brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Randy will be interviewing model, actress, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, Soleil West. Randy will also be reviewing the new crime thriller, Uncut Gems, and will be discussing the best films of the past decade with special guest critics Ivy Lofgren, Jason Koenigsberg, and Patrick Olacop. And now, here's your host, Randy Unger. Hey guys, I'm Randy Unger, and this is another edition of Unger the Radar, where we talk all things film. And right now, I have on Skype, I have uh, model, actress, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, Soleil West. Soleil, hello. Hello. Hi. How's it going? How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So <laughs> you're only 11, and um, you you have all these you wear the all these hats. Um, I'm curious. How did this all begin? Well, um, so for modeling, I was, um, I was three at the time and I was at a skating rink with my family. Mm. And so this guy comes up to us and was like, oh my God, I want to shoot her. <laughs> and then we were like, wait, what? Because we didn't really know like what shoot meant. Like we didn't really know which one he was talking about. And then, so, um, um, my mom had to get to know him first. And then, so I did the shoot. And then I was just like, wow, this is actually really fun. Mm. But, um, but um, I couldn't really say that to my mother okay. because I was only three and I couldn't really talk to her about it. Do you even so, remember this? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's, a, uh, that's very young, a very young age to, uh, to start in this business. So, um, right. but that's very cool. Um, right, yeah. I'm curious though. How do you how do you juggle this lifestyle, these this job, with with school and homework? Well, um, I'm homeschooled now, right. so it's definitely a lot easier for me to be able to go places, and then I'll have my schoolwork with me. I'll just have it on my laptop because it's online. Mm -hmm. But um, before I start doing homeschool, I just ask my teacher a few days in advance to give me the homework that I would need for those few days that I'm be gone and then I just do them while I'm wherever in New York or whatever. But um yeah, I definitely just do one at a time, like at school and then a few days and then I do my modeling cool. at some point. Yep. And I'm assuming a lot of the other models are a bit older than you. Um yes. is, it, is that tough? Is there like is there a competition there? Do they treat you any differently? Um no, actually, when I'm walking with adults, they're really nice. They really don't, like, judge me. They're not, they don't really say anything. They're, we're really cool with them, my mom, and them are really cool, so we're all good. Okay. Um, so do you prefer acting to modeling or vice versa? Um, I don't know. <laughs> actually, i say that I like them equally Okay. because they're... I like them both, honestly. Okay. Just generally. And and how does it feel being the youngest runway model ever? You know, it feels really good. <laughs> um, I I never really thought that would be like, wow, this is really cool. Like, I never really thought of it as something. I was just like, oh, I'm the youngest, so okay, that's cool. <laughs> but um, now I actually kind of take it seriously. Okay. Cool. And so you've got you've got your you've got your homeschooling you've got your job. What do you do for fun? What, you know, how do you uh, how do you take a break and relax? Well, um, I usually just hang out with my dog, harass my mom, <laughs> watch TV a little bit. But yeah, that's usually most of my day. I just do my work, 
then maybe color for a while after I do that, and then I go like watch TV or something. Okay. So it's more of a regular person. Cool. Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are what are some of your favorite TV shows right now? Ooh, I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know because it's not like I have a favorite one. I'm just like all over the place. All right. <laughs> so it's like, oh, let me just watch this. Okay. And then it just turns out it's all right. So I'll just watch it. Cool. But, so do you have like an ultimate goal? Like do you, do you want to be in movies? Do you want to make it big as a model? Like what is your ultimate goal at 11? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my ultimate goal at some point would be that I hopefully will be able to walk internationally, like in Lagos or Lagos. I'm sorry, okay. and um, yeah, but like be able to walk um, somewhere that's not in the United States, so, like somewhere else. Okay. Different. <laughs> cool. Do you have any inspirations? Like, are there any models or actors that who have inspired you? Um. It would definitely be Naomi Campbell because okay. I really like her and um, she has a great walk and people say, oh my God, you remind me so much of her. And um, I'm like, wow, that's really cool because she's such on a high level and I'm like, wow, the fact that they're even comparing me to her is really cool. Nice. Cool. All right. Um, I know that you're involved with um, the chattychick.com. Yes, uh, I'm the CEO. Yes. Cool. Well, what is that exactly? Um, Tag Chick is a t-shirt company that um, me, no, I run with my mom. Um, so it's more of like a t-shirt company for the whole family. At first, I kind of wanted it to be for um, black girls with hair or girls that look like me. But then at some point that, um, at some point I realized that it should be more versatile. Mm -hmm. And because I came out with this one shirt saying, I'd be jealous of my hair too. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people wearing it like girls with straight hair, girls with red um, curly hair, um, blonde hair, long long hair, I think I already said that. But um, mm -hmm. so I realized that um, it should be more versatile and I should have t-shirts for the whole family. That's cool. Do you come up with the, the catchphrases yourself, or do you have like a team of writers? Um, well, my family usually helps us, but um, it's mostly me and my mom. Okay, cool. Yes. So, you're so young. Uh, what advice do you have for other young performers out there? Um, I'd tell them to have fun, be yourself, set goals, and follow your dreams. Cool. Very inspirational. That should be on a shirt. <laughs> One of your shirts. Um, Hopefully. Yeah. So, are there any are there any projects uh, right now that you're working on that you can talk about? Um, no, actually, we're just. I'm trying to maybe set goals that we're hopefully hoping that we could do for 2020 because you know we're trying to expand everything. Like, um, I we we're thinking about. Um, Maybe doing another book, okay. but um, we're not sure about that. Like, um, but yeah, not we haven't really said that we're actually going to do anything. But um, for 2020, 2020, we're hoping to do a lot of different things. Cool. Well, um, I just wanted to. I, I know I should have said this in the beginning, but I wanted to wish you and your family a very happy holiday. Hope you had a great yeah. holiday. Yeah. Um, Me too. Yeah, and if you guys are you and your mom are ever in uh, New York, we'd love to have you stop by the studio. Yes, definitely. <laughs> cool. Well, so like, keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. And uh, yeah, we hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. All right. Have Thank a good you night. for having me. Of course, anytime. Thanks so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, guys, so we're going to take a short commercial break, but we'll be back with our film review segment right after this. Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 718-268-6634.
Hey guys, welcome back to Unger the Radar. I'm your host, Randy Unger. And as always, we've got a bunch of great things to talk about today. And I've got some wonderful critics back, some new faces. Um, Ivy Lofberg, welcome back. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Yeah, anytime. Always welcome. You were here thank during you. the first time we actually used the set. Yeah, so That was great. exciting. <laughs> uh, Jason Konigsberg. It's been a while for you as it well, sir. It has been, um, but I'm <laughs> glad to be back. Last time I was here, we were talking about Ad Astra, uh, and, uh, yeah. which I like. Not a fan. Not, no. And Last Blood, Rambo Last Blood. <laughs> Didn't so. like that either. And you were in your Ghostbusters getup. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was a while ago. <laughs> but, and Patrick Alaka. Alaka. I'm never going to get that right. Oh, okay. You'll get it. I, right. Yeah, I finally got it's, Koenigsberg it's, yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. So I'm moving on to you. I think You'll my parents are probably mispronouncing it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, we've got a lot to cover today. Um, we're going to be reviewing one film, one very good film, and I think this is on my top ten for the year. It's uh, Uncut Gems, and it stars Adam Sandler. There he is, in another dramatic turn, and he needs to keep doing dramas because he is really, really good. Um, he plays a jeweler uh, in the city. as 2012, right? takes place mm -hmm. uh, and basically he makes some high stakes bets with some unsavory individuals uh, some I think a mobster and uh, that's him with Kevin Garnett and Lakeith Stanfield actually who has who was kind of in the, in the corner in the kind of hidden in this movie a bit I want to see more of him but that's neither seen or yeah, He's popping up all over the place yeah 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 a small part in this a small part in Knives Death, Out Death yeah. Note Death Note he's okay. got a good two years so far yeah. but um Uncut Gems, I loved it. Uh, it's just a gritty thriller, mm -hmm. and it's from A2, A24 Films, so I'm really happy about that as well. They make good movies. Yeah. But uh, ladies first, Ivy, uh, what did you think? <laughs> I, I really love this. This was definitely one of my favorite films of the year, yeah. and it, it's, it is, I totally agree about Adam Sandler doing dramatic roles. He it needs feels to. Like it's, he it's, needs to. It's really it, natural for him. It is. You know, what I loved about Uncut Gems is Adam Sandler has this great, loud, frenetic energy, and I mm -hmm. felt like he channeled it into this role where I really felt for the guy. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like I kind of, I won't spoil the ending, but it, I felt like from the first moment, it like it was careening in that direction, <laughs> and yeah. the movie was very... Um, Immersive, yeah. like I, I really like his, felt his, like I was inside his, of this guy's life, and his character doesn't change at all, really. He Not at all. Kind of stays the same, and all this yeah. crap happens to him throughout the whole thing. If anything, yeah. he gets more self-destructive. Yeah. Maybe I think if I had to yeah. say his character might change, where he's just he's just always been so self-destructive. But you see how he's you know isolating himself from his work, mm -hmm. from his you know every anyone that loves him, you know his yeah. family, he's you know his. Marriage is, you know, failing yeah. with beyond, Idina, beyond I, repair. Idina Menzel, who yes. was wasted in this role. Oh, I thought she was good oh, in this. Did? I thought she was really good I in this. I think they could have used her a little bit more. Oh, yeah, maybe give her some more scenes, but it yeah. was about him. Like, right. Adam Sandler's in every frame of this movie. The yeah. only person who gets a few scenes on her own mm. is Julia Fox, and I think she was even better. Okay. As the girlfriend, mistress, she co-worker, employee. She was a secretary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. but I she think she, she added a level of humanity to his part that mm. really... Uh, yeah. uh, made the movie stand out where you were rooting for him because otherwise he was one of the most, like you said, yeah. unsavory, self-destructive, unsympathetic, despicable, greedy. low life characters yeah, yeah, you've yeah. ever totally. seen. Yeah, and he played it well. He <laughs> yeah. really played it well. It's Adam Sandler. Patrick, I, what, what did you think? Oh, I loved oh, I'm it. I'm sorry. I loved oh, it. <laughs> yeah, go for it. And then I also love that, um, like Julia Fox and Adam Sandler, their characters are despicable at the beginning. Like I didn't like Julia Fox's character at the beginning because. Yeah. She comes off as just, you know, the typical... It plays with stereotypes a lot. Mm -hmm. So you've got this character that's very stereotypical, like, um, you know, the woman that you're just having an affair with, and she's, like, kind of like... You think she's kind of slutty and everything, right. the way they set it up. He's and then they... her off, paying her right, jewelry, exactly. the apartment. They're, 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 like they're, that, they're yeah. not that much different, right. really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. then she's, like... Um, Kind of hooking up with a, I won't say what character, but there's a celebrity cameo in the movie. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but then by the end, it's like, um, yeah, you get to see their humanity. Mm -hmm. But I love that it doesn't really sugarcoat anything at the beginning, it shows you their worst features. Like a yeah. lot of movies start the opposite, where it shows you kind of like, you know, why you should like these characters and then they do bad things. Mm -hmm. This, I feel like it shows you. I, I didn't like anybody on the screen at the <laughs> yeah. beginning. Mm -hmm. And then you by sort the end, of like it was Sandler. like... Sandler. Yeah. But and really. um, <laughs> Jason and I were talking on the car ride over um, the fact that he's so Jewish 
<laughs> and mm -hmm. it's almost like he wears those Jewish stereotypes yeah, yeah. Those as like a, stereotypes. he like <laughs> yeah. reflects them back. It's like almost like a super turns them into a positive. It's like it's okay. it's like it empowers him. It's like <laughs> it's kind of interesting that it he's not he's like embracing those stereotypes, but instead of it being like you know oh I'm going to you know I'm not like that. It's like oh you know you're exactly right. I am exactly like like yeah. that. And it's weird. And it's his yeah. strength. It's, he, his, it's, it's a movie about mm. the Jewish experience. Yeah. It right. starts off mm. with the Jews in Ethiopia. I mean, where no, they he, have nothing. They're coming from the desert. And then you look at this gaudy, superficial, expensive lifestyle that could, Jews in New York yeah. have. I think this could have been any religion, any, any ethnic group. Maybe. Well, but Doesn't they mean. made it about Judaism. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You, could, you could turn it to another group or another yeah. religion or something. I think African American yeah, as well. Yeah, you could turn it to I that think, with Kevin Garnett. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so. I think that's what the whole... Uh, the. Ethiopian Jew is what it what it's saying at the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. is like kind of it's like the Jewish Jewish people in America and black people in America have had similar experiences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's why Jewish people were they fought so hard during the civil rights movement because they were um, prosecuted and persecuted in the same way as as um, African Americans. No. Mm. So I, I thought it was they like both interesting face that their challenges throughout yeah. history. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That was interesting to like connect yeah. those two. And now here they are vying for this superficial, you know, gemstone. Right. What does it mm. really mean? But it meant yeah. so much to these characters. It's yeah. true. I, I yeah. also felt like it was a little bit like a modern day Hobbit mm -hmm. uh, because okay. it was like the shiny yeah. the ring, thing, yeah. the okay. ring, yeah. and yeah. Like right. just oh. chasing yeah. it. Chasing after this thing. What does it really mean? And it transforms. Yeah. It's almost like a transforming him. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. because it, 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 it transformed him. Yeah. And the more he coveted it and the more that he had access to the it changed him kind yeah. of into the worst version of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This yes. this movie explores greed in a way I don't think I've seen in a, in a while in film. Anxiety yeah. too. It yeah. was the most anxious movie I think I've seen definitely and was. Being so. placed in Manhattan <laughs> yeah. doesn't hurt things. I, it helps in that I was that messed regard. up after yeah, that I was, movie. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I need a moment. I really <laughs> had to breathe for two hours. Yeah. And all the okay. other characters <laughs> felt so realistic. You mm -hmm. had a lot of, you know, Kevin Garnett playing himself, you know, Mike Francesa as a bookie, mm -hmm. a lot of New York yeah. based people, yeah, you yeah. know, celebrities playing themselves. And again, kind of, yeah. I go back to Lakeith Stanfield, who was, he was kind of in the corner throughout the whole movie. But he was just, you, you really believe that he is this guy who is in, he's really dealing with Kevin Garnett's business affairs. Mm -hmm. yeah. like you can really believe that. that that's acting. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. all of them, but a Sandler especially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope he gets an Oscar nomination. Oh, I hope so, I hope so too. too. Yeah. I, I really love, this won't give any of the movie away, but I really love when, like, I, Idina finds her husband naked in the trunk of a car, and she's just like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, yeah. That's so what did you do now? Yeah. 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 Howard. And so she's just been denial. putting up with it. Yeah. Uh, blinders on, pretending yeah. to have this wonderful, you know, Jewish family with strong values. Yeah. And yeah. it's, you know, it's based on a lot of lies and a lot of false wheelings and dealings. And I love yeah. Eric, yeah. Eric Bogosian. I think it's a spoiler he to say good. that he was the mob, sort of the mob boss in this. Like the Jewish mafia. Well, yeah, I mean, and the, well, I think the surprise was his relationship to Sandler. That yeah, that was, later on, I wasn't expecting. Because in the yeah. trailers, they show him threatening. And I definitely uh, didn't expect yeah. the very end, but I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go. No, into don't that. go there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was a very very good movie. Yeah, um, yeah, with yeah totally. a, On a deep movie and yeah. great performances across. It the was board. probably as good as I had hoped for. If yeah. I agree. If, if not, the, yeah. the reviews, maybe a little better than mm -hmm. I thought it was gonna be. If anything, I would say maybe slightly worse. My one complaint, I gave it three and a half out of four. My one, it's a small complaint. Complaint. Okay, and otherwise, Let's stellar movie. I, mean, I always have a complaint. Um, I want, <laughs> yeah. I'm a critic. I'm a critic. I had to be critical. My one criticism was in the climactic scene, he's watching a basketball game that took place in 2012. And now, especially if you're a Celtics fan, which I'm not, but if you were, you know how it's going to end. Mm. So, and the way it was shot, watching someone play, watching a game, isn't like being in there, being in the action. No. So it was it was kind of like, okay, we get it, we should be in suspense here, but you're watching a man cheer for a sport, and we were watching him watch it on TV. That's not as compelling as, say, actually being in the game. It was pretty in intense for it me. Was, it was good, <laughs> it but it was... Uh, well, you maybe know I don't know yeah. anything about basketball. No, maybe that's yeah, I mean, that. I mean, yeah, no, you're in a mini minority here. Okay, uh, that's Jason. fine. Jason. Um, but well, I still loved it. Yeah, well, I wanted to just finish this segment by just talking about Adam Sandler's career over the years mm. and how, you know, you guys have been I mentioned that in my review. Yeah. Impacted how uh, he, you know, over the decades. Evolved. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ivy, are you yeah, a big Sandler I, fan? You know, Comedic I, and dramatic? Yeah, you know, I, I really loved when he was on SNL. Oh, yeah. I felt like he was this very different guy. He mm. was 
very like subversive and he mm-hmm. wrote songs that mm-hmm. were funny and he had like this kind of sweetness to him that also felt very um subversive and kind of a man child mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah and and you know Can't i i'm really <laughs> excited that he's exploring other roles because yeah. personally like i i could do without some of his his comedic roles i i feel like when he you like, don't like jack and jill yeah <laughs> yeah shocker <laughs> he got to be pacino's boss in that uh, yeah Pacino maybe was that's why he did it yeah <laughs> How crazy that's a oh my God. changed. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Uncut yes. Gems was kind of a Pacino type performance. I could see yeah. a young Pacino. That New York, you yeah. know, in yeah. the seventies, mm-hmm. that grittiness, yeah, yeah. that taxi driver yeah. type of yeah. 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 yeah, this could have yeah. easily yeah. been a Scorsese film. Absolutely, yeah. 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 that had influence from Scorsese. Oh yeah, yeah. for but sure. The, going back to Sandler's career, I yeah. mean, he started off, you know, with the Saturday Night Live, yeah. and then you know, small. Remember, we we all love Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, The Wedding Singer. Boy. Those were medium sized hits. Yeah. Then because of home video and cable and they became huge hits mm. Waterboy was a huge hit that yeah. made like 80 million dollars opening weekend mm-hmm. or something and you know so then he went from small hits to huge I mean yeah. Waterboy uh, Little Nicky Mr. Deeds but whatever it is kind of, I think Big Mr. Daddy okay. around that time the early t- t- 2000s yeah. Career kind of yeah, went down, but he had huge. He was a huge star by then. But then, punch, huge punch drunk, punch drunk love. love is my favorite, and this had a lot of the same manic energy as punch drunk love. I think that's is that his, that's his first dramatic role. What, is it really a dramatic role? It's still an Adam Sandler movie. Uh, it just Paul Thomas Anderson made it. it it's the it's a romantic comedy. No, he shows okay, some, but he, he he has range. He exploited in that. Adam Sandler's anger and yeah, his yeah. you know his his acting right. in a way that no other film, Never no other seen director that side took of him before. to that place. Right, right. Well, so yeah, then he started to punch back and forth. I yeah. liked in Punch Drunk mm-hmm. Love. It's it's set up with the same man child, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but it's, it's his earlier movie. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's set in a realistic, surreal type way. Yes, like what would happen so if this person actually existed in real life it's, and had real problems, didn't have everything handed to him? Like it's like every you other know, movie, Billy Madison or every something. Every other movie he did prior to Punch Drunk Love would yeah. have had like a laugh track on it, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Punch Drunk yeah. Love is like this is real. This feels like it really happened. I still say that's his best performance to date. Yeah. But yeah, so then he started to branch out, but yeah. We're in the minority for people that like Punch Drunk Love. Mm-hmm. Most people I know, they hate Punch Drunk Love. They hate yeah. Rain Over Me. They hate oh. funny people. So he tried well, to branch people. out. Spanglish. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it, eh. but still, he tried to branch out. <laughs> right, he tried right. to do something different. Right. All those movies I just named, they all flopped. Yeah. Okay. So then he goes back to doing uh, what he another that was blended that or yeah. Fifty uh, First Dates mm-hmm. or no. Anger Mantras no. or no. Jack and Jill. Yeah. He goes back to that. And also remember, Adam Sandler, he's had a successful but turbulent career. Yeah. He went to Netflix because his movies were flopping. Mm-hmm. He was one of the first big stars to do Netflix movies. Was that, now they all about do. The, the Ridiculous stories? Six, The Meyerowitz yeah. Story, Sandy Wexler, mm-hmm. all these movies that went straight to Netflix. Mm-hmm. So he was kind of a pioneer for this Netflix movement that is now commonplace. I mean, look yeah. at The Irish. Yeah. No, look true. at Marriage Story. So right. yeah, so give Adam Sandler credit for that. Okay. Yeah. Before we go too much of a tangent, mm-hmm. um, we've got, our, we're going to take uh, a short commercial break, actually. <laughs> right after this, guys. <laughs> Under the Radar is brought to you by Magnitude Jewelry. Add a two to match your attitude. Patent pending interchange genuine gemstone and crystal EMF protection jewelry. For more information, please visit magnitudejewelry.com slash gemgirl or call 718-268-6634. And we're back. Hey guys, Rain Younger, Under the Radar, and right now we're going to go over our top 10 list, the best of the decade, 2010 to 2019, fitting since New Year's Eve is coming. Um, so guys, yeah, we're going to start with 2010, and for me, Social Network, for sure. And uh, actually, we will keep these, at, we're not going to do these like mini-reviews, we're just going to just set, mention it 
Okay. Why do we like it? And yeah. kind of just move on. But yeah, for me, Social Network, best film of 2010. Um, I just thought that Aaron Sorkin killed it with the screenplay. Uh, you've got Jesse Eisenberg, who is also... Before this movie, he was kind of... I didn't really know much about him. I knew Squid and the Whale. Um, but uh, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. done some great performances, and this is probably... So far, I think this might be his best. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 I don't think it'll be topped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ever. So <laughs> Unfortunately, so. for his career. But. And um, is it David or Peter? David Fincher? David Fincher. David Fincher. Fincher. His visual style, I mean, yeah. is unmatched. Like Even since Alien 3, I'd say. And the score mm. by Trent Reznor. Oh, yeah. And Atticus uh, Ross. That made the... The, <laughs> the crew <laughs> rowing, the yeah. rowing uh, scene. That was, uh, yeah. But that the, was whole, the whole, the whole, just the opening scene, him walking on Harvard, uh, mm -hmm. on the campus, everything. That, I felt like, yeah. started that with a... Uh, um, kind of rock stars or people in the pop culture Johnny making Greenwood, did he yeah do Johnny Greenwood did, yeah, okay, did yeah. it afterwards he I did believe right oh wait, no you're right he did it first he did, he did there it for will be there will be blood right that was oh. right. seven yeah that right, was right. first okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. alright cool Ivy yeah. best of 2010 well that's definitely up there um, I also have the fighter oh wow I, yeah, yeah, yeah I love the fighter it's I I really lo I think it's um, some of the best work that those like uh, that's Bale Mark, and and um, Mark Wahlberg, Wahlberg yeah which um, I I it's one of those films where I, I think of it and I go back to that <laughs> place of what it was like to you watch a, a man kind of break out of a family that was toxic for him and, yeah. and, um, and go <coughs> on that journey. So I thought it was, it yeah. was beautifully done. I think he, he won uh, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor for that, right? I Bale? Christian Bale did. Yes. Christian Bale did, yes. Christian Bale did. Yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which Thank you, well deserved, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Jason, best. So for me, I did my top ten a little differently because okay. um, I did this three weeks ago. But you can check out my top ten on my website, panandslam.com. And I have two from 2010 that were on my top ten. My number one yes. of the decade huh. was what you said, social network. Okay. Of, Not of only was decade. it number one for 2010, Whoa. it was number one for 2010 to okay. 2019. That was my number That's one crazy. of the decade. That is was the social network. Quite a bold so statement. I, I, well, sure. it, was, it was Citizen <laughs> Kane for the internet. Okay. What Okay. Citizen Kane did with newspapers, this did with websites. Yeah. And I, just the acting, the directing, everything, the, the writing, of course, yep. everything that we all said about it, I echo it. It's fantastic. It is. Um, but I also had number nine on my list from 2010. Uh, the number nine on my top ten was Inception. Okay. I uh. loved Inception. That was number nine. You could look at that as the ultimate Christopher Nolan movie in some ways. Right. Um, even though I don't maybe think it's as good as Dark Knight or uh, Memento, but I think that was a fantastic. I think for the time, the, vi the visual movie. effects yeah. on that were phenomenal. Even for today, yeah. And the acting, Get, uh, DiCaprio, yeah. Marion Cotillard. Mm -hmm. I really, really like the performances in that movie. Uh, well, Jason Gordon Levitt. Jo uh, Joseph Gordon. Joseph, Levin. Joseph, yeah. Joseph. Uh, Michael Caine is his father, and right. I really think Killian Murphy did a good job. In and he too. did this right after Dark Knight, right? So in between kind of... Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> so yeah, he got to you know nowadays they make comic book movies boom 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 right, boom. Right, right, right. He got to take a break in between because remember he did Batman Begins, then he did the the Prestige, mm. and then he did uh, the, the Dark, Dark Knight. Knight. So yeah, so two from 2010, but number one and oh. number one on my top ten is the Social. Also, Network. side note, fantastic score by Hans Zimmer. Yes, El, so. one of the greatest. Two, two of the best scores of the decade. Yeah. Are, you know, I think Inception it's a, and It's a good Network. year for music. I guess good year for music <laughs> and movies. There you go. Nice. Patrick, what do you got? <laughs> well, of course I would say Social Network as well, but I'm going to not talk about that. So <laughs> you guys talked about it. My other favorites, it's a, kind of a tie. They're very different movies. Hmm. Winter's Bone, okay. uh, which is... Jenner was kind of introduced movie. the world to mm -hmm. Jennifer Lawrence, and I still think okay. that's her best performance. I, not, I did not see it's that. She got her first Oscar nomination. Yeah. For was that right after Transformers? Incredible. It was two years after. Transformers. She wasn't in Transformers. Wait, what, who, what, you, I thought you said um, Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, I said Jennifer I mixed Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another <laughs> attractive actor. Yeah. Yeah. Attractive, Megan Fox. Very different. Yeah. 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 Very different talent-wise, I think. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Megan Fox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very real, very gritty. A, a really just one of the best movies about poverty and just um, yeah mm. and then the other movie very different Scott Pilgrim versus the world <laughs> oh my gosh fun it's movie a movie. really really fun movie, movie. Oh, it's, it's a movie that I can just I just had to mention it because it's a movie I could watch like every day if I wanted to it's just like you could really yeah really fun direction really <laughs> fun everything I just think it's kind of like too. perfect popcorn movie and also very creative with the way the visual style 
Well, that's Edgar Wright yeah. for you. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he never disappoints. Uh, yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Shaun of the Dead. Hot uh, Fuzz. Exactly. What was the, the, so the one? Good. Baby Driver? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Baby, Baby Driver. Driver. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Style incredible. was better than that. I'm thinking that might. Yeah. That not, that's not on my list. I didn't like World's film. End, but. I didn't like a World's End either. Hot Fuzz and. Yeah. Nice, nice. All right, moving on, guys. 2011. So for me, it's a tie, I think, a tie. I couldn't decide. Either Drive mm -hmm. with Ryan Great Gosling. Movie. You got Great Albert movie. Brooks as a mobster. He's sadistic. Yeah. You know, I've grown up uh, loving Albert Brooks as like this kind of likable dad type. Mm. But now he's just sticking forks in people's eyes. And <laughs> he was mad he wasn't yeah. nominated for an Oscar that year. Yeah. Oh, he, he was wasn't? very vocal that he oh wasn't. He was up to, I think, Not even uh, a nomination. I think Ryan Gosling should have been nominated for Best Actor. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And his gloves, those driving gloves. And the jacket <laughs> with the scorpion and the clippers yeah. hat. It was, uh, there's so beautiful, many good little beautiful, details. Yeah. Uh, beautifully filmed. Oscar, yeah. Oscar Isaac dying in that. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a great scene. The music, uh, too. Yeah. Good music, yeah. good soundtrack. Overall, yeah. just a decent film. Kind of a film noir. What do you call it? Neo-noir? Neo-noir. Yeah. Or yeah. like a modern yeah. western. It felt like Shane. A, re mm. a modern retelling of Shane, yeah. I think. Yeah. See that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's either Drive or uh, Woody Allen's Midnight in Paris. Uh, mm. Yeah. You know, Love he kind of like, he, he returned back to like his yeah. romantic, his dramatic, dramedy roots, mm. you know, that make his characters so rich and, and likable. Um, you've got Owen Wilson, and he's just kind of this lost guy, and he finds inspiration. Uh, in the Paris cultural scene, and it's just a, a fantastic. I, I love that movie so mm. much too. How he's able to—it's like a, a fantasy, but it always feels grounded in yeah. some kind of reality. Like, yeah, it's just like a nice, like almost dreamlike in some parts. But um, Ivy, what was 2011 for you? Well, I had Bridesmaids. I <laughs> love Bridesmaids so much. It's a it's a very smart comedy. It's a very I'm, smart comedy, yeah. and I, I what I love so much about it is I I feel like it it opened up the door for R-rated comedies for women okay. and R-rated comedies written by women and that women can do kind of some really gross out humor <laughs> that's hilarious. It inspired a lot and of not so good spin-offs. Rough Night, Girls yeah, Trip, I, I Rise, agree. Bad Mom. Yeah. I agree. So Bridesmaids is yeah. great, but I don't like its influence <laughs> no. thus far. Yeah. <laughs> I the, agree, the, but I, I think that just as like seeing women do that on film. I guess um, it hadn't really was, been done before. It hadn't really yeah. been done In a before. way, no, it is. I guess it you is the same thing female empowerment. Now, you know? I felt that way. Like I, I, I felt like it was the first film where I kind of also recognize some of the clothes. women in it okay. like it oh, and right. these women were allowed yeah, to definitely. also play these um these like just talk like tell dirty jokes you know yeah, and yeah. it and it was an all-female cast and yeah. their dirty jokes were about their life and about their own experience and I agree I I really hope Kristen Wiig or someone on her caliber <laughs> will write more R-rated comedies mm -hmm. um because I agree a lot of I don't like any of the ones you mentioned either, yeah. but I, I'm excited that Bridesmaids is It was in the cool, world. except that it did inspire the new Ghostbusters. There you go. I which was McCarthy. I, yeah. I don't yeah. like Not it. A fan. I liked it. I didn't oh. hate it, but I no. I hate it. <laughs> so when I revisited it about a year ago, just the second viewing was like, this is not good. Really. <laughs> I only saw it once in the theater, so I can't, uh, maybe if I see it again, I'll hate it. So. But, um, right. but guys, uh, 2011, 2011 um, or we. I'll, I'll go. You go. I don't have a single movie on my top 10 from 2011, ah. but if you look on my website, panandslam.com, <laughs> number 13, the only Scorsese movie on my top 20, Hugo. That was my, uh, okay. would be my favorite movie of 2011. And that was in 3D too, It right? was, And it was beautiful yeah. 3D. It was like the anti-Avatar. You felt the snow <laughs> coming down. It was such a beautiful experience. And I love that he gave the late, great Christopher Lee a role, a small supporting role, where he wasn't a villain. Mm. I thought that was, leave it to Scorsese to do that. I, yeah. I love that movie. I, I thought, when I saw the trailer, I thought, oh, great. Scorsese won an Oscar for Departed. Now he's doing a Harry Potter clone. It mm. is pure Scorsese. It's fantastic. Is that... Is that live action? It was live action. I didn't action. see it. Yeah. You didn't see Hugo? No, I did oh, not. Oh, you got to see Hugo. It was a great movie. Oh, you yeah, got to see Hugo. So that's that, not on my top ten, but that was my favorite of 2011. Cool. Yeah. All righty. Patrick. And you guys said my two, the two movies that I think are the best of that year, Bridesmaids and... Um, and drive. Nice. Excellent. Nice, um, nice. Well, I'm think agreeing that, on yeah. this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think Bridesmaids is one of my favorite comedies like of all time. Yeah. So I, it was really hard to think of it in terms of top ten, but. But then I was thinking about the movie that made me laugh the most out of like any movie, like modern movie, <laughs> like even the Judd Apatow movies. I find no. I find Bridesmaids like 
absolutely hysterical. Yeah, it's good. Um, also, train wreck. Was that a, that was that was an Apatow. That movie. was Apatow. Yeah, yeah that was I like never, also actually, gross out. I actually never saw Train Wreck. I'm it's not a good. big it's, Amy Schumer it's fan. Funny. It's funny. You know, I, I wasn't either, Morton, but yeah, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. You have to check it out. It's a good one. All right, Please. all right, guys. For time, another one with a basketball player. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, 2012. 2012. <laughs> another tie. Uh, flight. And Wreck It Ralph. I have played also. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. You've got Denzel always in fine form. He plays an alcoholic, drug, sort of a drug addict, a uh, pilot who basically sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, the How end. do you define drug <laughs> alcoholic? <laughs> okay, yeah. In the beginning, he was a little drunk. No, you're right. He did do coke. Yeah, yeah he, did. He, did. he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. Full yeah, sort no. of. He's a sub sub substance abuser. Very much. So, um, yeah. Who crash lands this plane and basically. He's put on trial for, you know, the deaths of the people who were on the, some of the people who died on the plane, and he's basically just trying to struggle uh, with his addiction, with his explosive, you know, personality, his unpredictability, and I, I love Denzel and pretty much everything he does. I, I, I loved in that movie too, like it was willing to explore this yeah. in incredibly complex premise that yeah. he was the only one who could land this plane without yeah. everybody dying, but he was. <laughs> almost like blackout drunk doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And exploring something like that on film, I thought was, they yeah, did a great job. Indeed. I love Denzel as much as anybody, but Flight to me was as uh, subtle as a sledgehammer to the head. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when John Goodman shows up and he's his drug dealer, what song are they playing? Sympathy for the Devil, come on. Yeah. We're talking about ripping off Scorsese. All oh. right. I don't know, but it, he's good. Yeah. Denzel's good as always. Yeah, he's good as always. All right, and also Wreck-It Ralph, very different. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> That's uh, a great that's, movie. I can't say anything bad. That's one yeah. of the, the best animated films I've seen in the past, yeah, 10 years. That and Inside Out for me would be, yeah. Uh, Inside, yeah, okay. Those two would be my two Both favorites. Disney, right? Inside Out was Pixar. One Disney, one yeah. Pixar, same yeah. thing. Same thing, same yeah. thing. Cool. <laughs> Definitely a lot better than Frozen 2. Oh, God. <laughs> Which the, I didn't see Frozen really 2. Really, one of the worst I heard it was saw this visually year. beautiful, I mean. Yeah, visually. Yeah. It's the same as Frozen 1. <laughs> <laughs> same movie, pretty much. Totally unnecessary. Um, Patrick, 2012. Yeah. So for me, this is also a kind of a toss-up: Moonrise Kingdom Ooh. and uh, Skyfall. Nice. And I do fi feel like Skyfall, although it, I don't know, it's debatable, but I feel like it might be the best James Bond movie. Okay. It's the one that I think goes the deepest with him, and mm. it 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 goes into his backstory with still remaining uh, a mysterious character. Okay. It doesn't really do too much and I love that it brings in Judy Dench and she's like the Bond girl it kind of takes all of what? the cliche if you think about it like <laughs> it don't, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Javier Bardem is the villain they were right. both mm -hmm. brilliant yeah. yeah oh yeah cool I also have the master Oh, which I thought master. was so brilliant. He, he yes. debated yeah. that, <laughs> that was yeah. that movie That's just kind of it, it wasn't appreciated enough. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was a difficult watch. It's it very. Was. I've given it chance after chance, yeah. and it's not a fun movie. It's, it's not great not, acting though. It's, it's, not, very, yeah. it's not for all tastes. <laughs> totally. no. And I love P.T. Anderson too. Oh yeah. 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 Can I yeah. Do sure. my 2012? 2012, yes. 2012, okay. Number five on my top ten, Zero Dark Thirty. Nice. I absolutely loved Zero Dark Thirty, and I've got a few other 2012s on here. I just need to find them, mm -hmm. uh, but that would be my favorite of the year. Okay. And then I think also, oh, Lincoln. Okay. Was came out in 2012. Wasn't the Spielberg by Lincoln. That. I other I, than the last 15 minutes, other than the but, epilogue, I was blown away by. Really? It. I was absolutely. I think that's Spielberg's I mean, best. Of it the has decade. all the makings of a great epic drama. And I thought it did. I thought it was there. Daniel I mean, it, Day it, Lewis it kind was of fell so a little flat. I love I, him. I love seeing the legislative process. How he was doing these dirty and scrupulous things to get the 13th Amendment passed. Yeah. Um, I just didn't like the ending with the. The epilogue. The last 15, Spielberg goes mm. on too long and he doesn't know how to end and he has to yeah. give you a happy ending. 2012, also number 15, Moonrise Kingdom. Nice, and nice. I know there's another one on here. Wait, ah, number 20, Django Unchained. Oh, wow. Those are all, yeah. so 2012 was a good year yeah. for films. Yeah. Okay, Indeed that has the most yeah, yeah, on, on my top 20. More from 2012 okay. than any okay. other year. All right. all right, guys, so for time, yeah. let's, we're going to keep the, the little mini reviews a little more, you know, smaller. All right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> all right, uh, 2013 for me, um, the Coen Brothers dra dramedy, I'd say, uh, Inside Lewin Davis. Yeah. Loved it. And Loved great movie. That. One of Adam and Driver's uh, first roles, if I'm not mistaken. First things I've seen. Post him in. girls. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, and basically, you've got Oscar Isaac, who never disappoints in my mind. Uh, he was great in Star Wars, but he is terrific in this. He just kind of this loner. This guy also lost, doesn't know really what's what to do with his life, 
And um, yeah, he just encounters some interesting people in the process, including uh, Adam Driver, who's very funny in this too. <laughs> but uh, also a great, great soundtrack as well. Great soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ivy 2013? I have, I really loved Short Term 12. It's one of Brie Larson's first movie. As okay. She works for in mm. yeah, that was, uh, that's right. Foster. That is a uh, great movie. It's such a great movie. Huh. Yeah. It, it plays like a documentary and it really uh, like goes into like kids who kind of live in a group home. Um, what that's like for them, and it really, I sometimes forget that it wasn't a documentary. It's wow. Just that well interesting, done. So. interesting line. I'm scared of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number yes. four on my top ten from 2013 is Her, uh, directed mm. by Spike Jones, yes. starring Joaquin Phoenix. I think that's one of the greatest romantic uh, comedies of the year, dramedies of the year. Yep. And also on my top ten from 2013 is number at coming in at number eight, Twelve Years a Slave. Ah, yes. Okay, that to me felt like the Schindler's List of the Civil War. And that won Best Picture. And it won Best Picture. Right, right, and I was right. actually happy with what won Best Picture that year. So those two are on my top ten from 2013. Good choice, yep. sir. I'm up there with her, but I won't talk about that. But also one of my favorites, Before Midnight, and that which is oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. And that to me, I yeah. still think that's the best trilogy. Interesting. Yeah. The, the Before trilogy, and and Before Midnight, I think is the best, the, the best one. Really? Yeah. 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 yeah I think the, the the middle one was was. Um, the, the weakest. Source. Oh, I like that one Did a you? lot. Yeah. Yeah. I love that one. I, I, really love, that. I love all of them, but yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do an exp I'm going to watch all three back to back one day. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good I think, that's a, I think yeah. each one yeah. gets better and each one gets, as gets they mature. It gets sadder. Yeah. 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 I, had, I had Before Midnight at number 18 mm -hmm. on my top 20. Yeah. I love uh -huh. Before Midnight. Yeah. 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 Great performance. They, their chemistry is literally 25 years in the making. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. good. And I hope they make another one uh, in the 2020s. Interesting. I really think they could. They're both still alive. Who knows? Sunrise. like, yeah. 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 They I could do know. it. They yeah. could do it. Richard yeah. Linklater could do it. Those two, they've yeah. Well, Linklater, really man, good. he is dedicated. He had a good yeah. decade. He is such he an had artist. A good decade, man. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's doing the Sondheim movie that's gonna come out in twenty. Oh, years. Is, a, is a biopic? It's a uh, no. It's actually what's the "Merrily We Roll Along" oh. the, the Sondheim play. He's doing that musical. Huh. Huh. It, again, he's filming it like I think it's gonna come out in twenty years. Oh. <laughs> it's like filming it now. It's like boyhood. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Committed. It's great. Hopefully he lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully everybody lives. I know, I know. <laughs> that dedication, yeah. man. That's crazy. Um, okay, so this is a great year. 2014. Mm -hmm. um, it was a tie. Uh, the Theory of Everything. Uh, oh just basically, good, the, good the movie it. itself is decent, but the performances are what sold me. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Redmayne as Stephen Hawking. He was just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Beautiful performance there, um, and the same pretty much can be said for J.K. Simmons in my second movie of the year, Whiplash, which he won uh, Best Supporting Actor uh, playing an abusive uh, drum instructor teacher, and these two I could I could not pick <laughs> one out of these two. Yeah. Uh, they're just so amazing. Very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. You're gonna like the two that I have. Yeah. Are completely different. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, Redmayne won uh, the Oscar for Theory of Everything, mm. and uh, deservedly so. Uh, Ivy, 2014. I, I had um, I I had Captain Phillips. I I feel huh. like it was okay. a really uncelebrated movie. I feel like. I think Tom Hanks should have gotten nominated for an Oscar for it. I felt like it was watching an actor without a net. I was mm. afraid for him. <laughs> and um, I felt like he just gave one of the best performances right. ever. And I, I just want people to see that movie. Because it feels like it got lost that year. And it solidified the fact that you, ne you don't want to go traveling with Tom Hanks. Exactly. <laughs> never yeah. never ends up yeah. a few years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything <laughs> happens yeah. to him. That's yeah. so funny. All right. All right. So for me, we're yes. up to 2014. Okay, number two on my top ten, Richard Linklater, <laughs> Boyhood. Okay, ah. to me, 20, 2014 had a lot of really good movies, but two genuine, I knew when I saw them that they were going to be, you know, best of the decade, whatever. <coughs> Boyhood, without a doubt, 12-year mm. experience making that movie. Mm -hmm. I absolutely loved every minute of it. I've seen it four times every time I'm still on the edge of really? my seat. Wow. And then number ten on my top ten of the decade, Birdman. Birdman. Okay, oh, so yeah. as good as you thought Eddie Redmayne was, that really? would not have worked. Keaton would have hundred percent. Yeah, would not, that no one could have played that hey, part other than Michael I love, Keaton. I love yeah. Batman. I, know I you love Beetlejuice. I, know you I love, love the Michael Dream Keaton. Team. But okay, I didn't. I don't think yeah. that was an Oscar caliber I think performance. That was his best performance. A nomination made. For, yes, the, the movie couldn't have worked without him. I think they could have picked pretty much no, because it was playing on his Batman. 
part. Interesting. It was playing. They, it would not have worked with anyone. Maybe else. if Christopher Reeve were still alive, they could have no, done something. It had to be him. <laughs> That's hundred percent. hundred percent. It had to be him. You are very. They would certain. have scrapped. I'm hundred percent. No other actor could have played. That All right. Part. It wouldn't. Have, it would have been. It's, they would have to change the whole. I movie. think Robert Downey Jr. could have. Ten years from now, yes, not now. He's still popular. <laughs> okay. He's not a has been. Okay, okay. Fair yes. Enough. Eventually, yeah. uh, Christian Bale could eventually. Maybe. But I do agree with you yeah. that yeah, that was the best performance. That was the best. And Edward Norton, I like. He oh, was yeah. good in that, and Emma Stone was good in that. Yeah. Zach yeah. Galifianakis was kind of dramatic yeah. in that. Everyone was good in yeah. that. So those yeah. two masterpieces for me: Boyhood at number two, Birdman at number ten on my top okay. ten of the decade. Nicely done. <laughs> I'm not going to mention those two, but those I absolutely love. Um, but there's also Grand Budapest Hotel. Mm. That was on my top and, uh, yeah, His masterpiece, I'd say. And Under the Skin, which that if you guys great. haven't yeah. seen that, I don't, have you seen the guys? Is seen that, that a sci-fi horror? It's, yeah, yeah Scarlett, 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 Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Definitely like her Kubrick, bravest yeah. <laughs> and darkest performance. Okay. Great, great science fiction movie that uh, is, yeah, very strange. Like she, she picked up like men for real in the movie, so it, it combines like these documentary type things like the whole thing is she's it's like almost species if it were directed by Kubrick, Kubrick. yeah that's, <laughs> that's pretty much a crazy yeah. combo yeah. and it's, a, it's great because species yeah. is a good B movie yeah. and this is a yeah, yeah. All right. but then she gets a, a conscience halfway through she starts to learn what it is to be human and mm. it becomes a very different movie. I don't want to say anymore. Yeah. But okay. It's, it's an interesting it's a really, really, really I've, I've been meaning movie. to but yeah that's oh, on my see list it, it's well. fantastic. Yeah, yeah under the skin. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so, yeah, we only have five minutes left. So. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh, just quick. Yeah, yeah, we're not even going to do the synopsis. Name the title. Go. All right, 2015. For me, The Revenant. Nice. Uh, yeah. Guardi Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh. All right. For <laughs> me, 2015, I've got Mad Max Fury Road at number six, Straight Outta Compton at number 18 or 19, and one more. Wait, Spotlight at number 12. Good one. So, Good one. Yeah. Hey, there's your boy Keaton. He's my boy, too, actually. I love Michael <laughs> Keaton. Well, he's got two on my top yeah, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Uh, the founder didn't make it up there? I love the founder. That was good. No, not <laughs> on the best of the decade, as much as I liked it. All right. Yeah. Patrick. Ex Machina. Absolutely. Okay. Terrific movie, yes. Yeah. Now, I didn't see that. That's also sci fi, right? Very mm -hmm. good sci fi. And Oscar Isaac, whom you said you loved yeah. and everything. That's you not Rami Malik? No. No, no I'm, I'm mixing them up. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's yeah. next? We got 2016. For me, everybody loved the performances, but not the movie as a whole. I thought it was a beautiful, basically, a play filmed as a movie, uh, Fences. Yeah, I have I, not I, seen that one. Again, it's good. One. Yeah, it's a good movie. It goes yeah. back to Denzel, yeah. and this is basically a family drama where he just plays a, a, a grumpy prick, and <laughs> it's just a great performance from him. He and, had a hard uh, life. Yeah, and Viola Davis, who's all, who plays his wife, mm. love this. She movie. won for that. It's August uh, Wilson. Yes, play, it right? is. Yes, it is. Good job. Yeah, yes. very, very good writing. Very smart. Yeah. I like, I yeah. like him as a writer. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think I might have got my years wrong because I have Mad Max, but did Mad Max come that was out 2015. the year? Oh, well, I liked it, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. 16 for me, number three on my list. I still can't believe this movie was made. In some ways, I think this should be number one, mm. Moonlight. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then Great I also movie. have, I think it's number 17 on my list, Hell or High Water. Oh, yes. Yes, that was, uh, mm -hmm. that was uh, in contention yep. with uh, mine, but... Um, I just like Denzel's performance more than, but I think Hell or High Water might be a good. It's that's a, a modern western. It's a modern western. That's a great modern western. With a, that's Pine and Chris ben Pine, Foster. Ben Foster, Jeff Bridges should have won the Oscar. For I think that, Foster should have been nominated. Uh, that, was he? I don't even know. No, who was. only Jeff Bridges was. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Mad Max Fury. Or, I mean, um, yeah, 2016, Moonlight, without a doubt. Okay. The most, one of the most powerful movies of the year. Right. Great film about. There's so many deep... It was the best empathy generator for me mm -hmm. this year. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. And I'm in agreement with Jason. Yeah. That, to me, that's... That, I think, arguably, is the best movie of the decade, mm. in my opinion. So Okay. And I wouldn't argue just, against that too I, much. I, I, yeah. Interesting. I agree, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's powerful. Yeah. Um, all right, 2017. we got three minutes. Let's... Uh, all right, I, all right. I, all right. <laughs> 2017, Last Flag Flying. Nice. Yeah. Uh, get, get out. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 2017, not one on my top 10, so I'm going to say Dunkirk, which was my favorite movie of that year. It nice. didn't even make it on the top 20. Good. <laughs> 
the new Blade Runner 20, oh, okay. 20 oh, was yeah. it 2099 2049 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, nice. perfect movie. it was yeah. a beautiful movie but it doesn't hold a candle to the original in my opinion I agree that's but a it's still a great that's a, I love that it doesn't season. try to re- it's a great it season. doesn't try to redo it and it yeah. works for however that's whatever what I, ending you want to believe right, mm-hmm. right yeah it still was mysterious okay what are we up to we're up to 2018 All right. for me uh, can you ever forgive me good movie oh, great movie yeah love Melissa McCarthy's performance just phenomenal and Richard E. Grant yeah, Fantastic. I would say that's tied for me with Roma. I really oh, love that. yes, that yes, yes. Incredible 2018 for me is Hereditary. Nice. Uh, a great decade yeah. for horror movies. This to me was the best one out of all of them, and that's saying a lot. Also, that was A24 film. Yes, it was. Very nice. All right. <laughs> Burning, a movie that no one has really seen. It's a good movie. It's really Burning. great Burning. Korean. It's a very good Korean. Yeah, really okay. great Korean movie. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you've seen it. You made me rec- see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. And the last one. Here we are, 2019. This is the now. Uh, for me, not a lot of people saw this one, but the Shia LaBeouf, uh, Dakota Johnson dramedy, The Peanut Butter Falcon. That was a cute movie. Yeah, it was that very was sweet. Movie. It was yeah. heartbreaking. Honey it was Boy funny. was great, too. Honey Boy was yeah. very... They're both yeah. very... Shia had, had a good, good this year. Was a great, great, de- great a good year, year for, for yeah. Shia. Thank goodness. Right. <laughs> I had Parasite. Nice, 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 and 2019 nice. for me, Parasite, Parasite was number seven on and my Parasite's for me too. Wow! <laughs> All right. Parasite yeah. across the board. Really? Okay. Like, there's yeah. no contest. Well, you know what? I agree. There's yeah. nothing. It's Parasite, and then everything else is way yeah. below. Yeah. What? Yeah. I did see Parasite, but you know what? I haven't seen the rest of the, the some of the better films that have come out this year. They're not better than Parasite. They're nothing's better. Really? <laughs> They're not no, better no, than you're, Parasite. You're not even Midsummer. Good. good. Yeah. No, I love no. Midsummer, but Parasite was better. That's fair. Parasite rejuvenated my love of motion pictures. Okay. Which is saying. A lot. This was yeah. uh, the past few months have been exciting for movie fans. Yeah. But that was the one that really jump started me. It was, it like, was and it I've was seen different. it twice in theaters. I think nice. I've seen it a third time. Every time I see it, I learn more about sure. like once you know everything that's going to happen, you can see like the inner workings of yeah. everything, how it, everything uh-huh. So many yeah. details that it just it just you just want to know better. as much as you can at the, yeah, about this family. Just, yep, <laughs> cool guys. And the house itself felt like a character. Mm-hmm. I got for best uh, set design, scenery that should mm-hmm. win an Oscar. I think for the that. cinematography was the phenomenal. cinematography. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't mind win ever give it to everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. All right, guys. <laughs> so one more minute. We're really going uh, down the wire. Um, some plugs, Ivy. What's going I'm on? What's just uh, <laughs> sorry. That, yeah, um, <laughs> you, you can uh, find me on Instagram at the Cinema Gal. Cool, cool. And you can check out all my reviews and articles at panandslam.com, www.panandslam.com. Follow me on Facebook, Jason Konigsberg, Twitter, Jason K. Critic. Uh, A lot of interesting articles there, a lot of exciting stuff happening with the end of the year, best of the year lists. And Mm -hmm. the Oscars are coming up early, February 9th this year. So panandslam.com. There it is. <laughs> and I'm actually LA based, so anything that I I say I guess if you guys want to make a video and anybody lives in LA, then they could go to I have a video production business. Or called, they could pay for you to come to Or they here. could yeah, yeah, they could pay for it. me. Sure. <laughs> called Concept Thirty Three. Okay. Um concept three three dot net is the website. Sweet. So. Sweet. And guys, uh, yeah, I wanted to wish you all guys a, a happy holiday. Happy I hope you had a good holiday. Merry New Year. Yes. <laughs> Merry it's, New Year. It's happy New Year. <laughs> yes. we, we went to Diker Heights. Have you oh, yeah, yeah. The, the displays. Yeah, those, yeah that beautiful. was really fun. That's cool. Yeah. Did you guys have a good holiday as well? Yes, yeah. very good. Yeah. Very good. Cool, yeah, cool. Exactly. I went to Nashville for a couple of days, like four or five days. So okay. that was fun. That was good. And yeah. I came here for... Christmas. This so. is his Christmas. Well, there you go. Christmas. Yeah, this that's is a great. great. That's yeah. what I would get for myself. Yeah, and that's a plane <laughs> ticket. <laughs> All right, guys. So we're out of time, but we'll be back uh, next week with more movie reviews and interviews. I'm your host, Randy Unger. This has been Unger the Radar. Stay tuned for next week. Cheers. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>